Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you've had an amazing week. So today I'm doing a little August favorites for you. This is probably one of the last videos I'm filming in this house. By the time this video actually goes live, we will have actually moved out of this place. I'm just trying to film as much content as I can here before we move because this place is just so beautiful and I'm gonna miss it a lot. And our living situation for the next wee while could be rather sort of disruptive and temporary. It's gonna be an interesting time. So I have a couple of beauty favorites as well as a couple of more lifestyle-y things. We'll start with beauty. The first product is a hair product that I got from my hairdresser recently. So I get my hair done every sort of three months or so. I usually get a bit of a trim and some foils. Every six months I'll get like a whole head done and then in the three months in between I'll do just like a half head. So I just got a half head, it was just to kind of bring some of the blonde back up. Although it has now been about five weeks since that appointment and I'm already getting a lot of regrowth coming through. But the last time I went my hairdresser was like, your hair is feeling very very dry. I think it's partly because we sort of bleached it quite a lot the time before we sort of lightened the ends even more than they already were and also it being winter I feel like just sitting by the fire every night it's really really dry in this house because of all the heating we have to use because it's a really old house so I felt like my hair and my skin and my lips have just been so so dry um, this winter I've never experienced it so I decided to pick up an oil for my hair just to help give it a little bit more moisture over these few months and to help it to not break off because it was feeling pretty brittle um, so I grabbed the Olaplex number no. 7 bonding oil. So this is part of the Olaplex range It's meant to like strengthen your hair so it doesn't break as much um, But it's also really nourishing and helps to like hydrate the hair So I've only just started using it, but I definitely feel a real difference. I mean this is third day here So it's definitely starting to feel a bit dry. My hair is really funny in that it gets oily a bit at the roots not terribly I can go a few days without like needing dry shampoo, but the ends get really dry as the week goes on so even though I can kind of get away with like, you know, only washing my hair like once a week if I wanted to, the ends get quite dry. And so I think having some kind of like oil, um, and I've got a, I've got the Olaplex number no. six as well, which is like the styling cream. I use that as well just to like add a little bit of moisture to my hair midweek. And I've just been finding it really, really nice. I've used it like a couple of times a week for a few weeks and you can see it, it looks like I have not touched it at all. <laughs> you need so few. You just do a few drops in your hand and massage it through the lengths of your hair. And so I imagine this is going to last me like over a year. In terms of makeup products, I actually have three new beauty products that I got off Yes Style. They sent me a gift card so I was able to do an order for some of their cruelty free like Asian beauty products. Some things I ordered I'm not a huge fan of. I'll talk about those in like another video. But these three products I was really, really stoked with. So the first is, it's a Taiwanese brand. It's called Laura Mere. It looks a little bit like Laura Mercier, <laughs> but it's called Laura Mere. From what I could gather online, I believe this is kind of like a private labeling company that just has their own sort of brand that they like sell things through like Yes Style and such. But it's not like it has its own kind of website or anything it's it's kind of confusing but either way I got this off yes style and it's like a little cream blush it was only about ten dollars and it is so nice it's actually what I'm wearing on my cheeks today it's really dewy very hydrating kind of cream blush like it doesn't go powdery and this color is the most gorgeous like spring like kind of nectarine sort of shade um, this is the shade number two. I actually plan to get number one next time I do an order because I just am enjoying this so much and it's so affordable. But this reminds me of like the cream blush version of Clinique's Melon Pop. I love that blush and this is just such a great like cream sort of version of it. I feel like someone like Jessica Braun would absolutely love this. She loves cream blushes and particularly these sort of peachy shades. Ugh. Stunning. So I'm really stoked with that. And then I also tried this eyebrow product from the brand Fasio or Facio, F A S I O. This is a Japanese brand, and this is like a really great dupe for that MAC eyebrow sort of pen and shadow duo. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was called, but I used to love that product like a few years ago. And this is a great cruelty free alternative to that product. Firstly, packaging absolutely beautiful it's this gorgeous little soft sort of millennial pink packaging that's kind of what drew me into trying it to be honest the actual product as well is fantastic so this is in shade number two that i have and it's got that sort of felt tip almost like a liquid liner sort of style pen on one side so you can draw really little precise brow strokes and i just love it it's not too pigmented but it definitely shows up enough i was a bit worried the color might be too light but it's what i'm wearing my brows today and i think it's perfect because it sort of matches 
the color of my roots really well. And then on the other end, there's one of those little kind of powder, sort of eyebrow powder pen sort of things, um, like a shadow pen. And this is really nice just for adding a wee bit of softness, particularly to sort of the outer part of the brow. Both sides are really, really nice. I'm so thrilled with this. I'm definitely gonna order some more. I don't think this is particularly cheap. I think this was around like $30, so it's not like a drugstore price point, but if you're looking for like a cruelty-free alternative to the MAC one, then this is a great option because it's about the same sort of price point. Actually, I tried two products from this brand. This is the brand called Cara, which I haven't heard of before either. It is a cruelty-free brand, and this is their lip oil. I also have their little like, it's like from the same line, a little lip balm, which I quite enjoy, but I think I like this more because it sort of fills a bit of a gap in my lip care needs. So over this winter, as I say, my lips have been so dry, like, like if I don't have them constantly moisturized with lip balm, they'll just start peeling like off my face. I think it's partly to do with just environment. It's just so dry in here, but also because I've been using tretinoin on my skin and some of that must be like traveling during the night towards my lips and causing them to be really dry and irritated. So I basically am not really wearing lipstick that often these days. Um, or if I do, I have to have a couple of days of like lip balm wearing after. But for days when I kind of want just to have like a nice sort of clear gloss, I cannot wear lip gloss, like proper lip gloss at the moment. My lips just will be destroyed. So I love the idea of a lip oil that's kind of like a liquid lip balm in a way. And that's basically what this is. It's an almond oil based lip oil. And it reminds me a lot of that Essence lip oil I used to love back in the day that unfortunately is discontinued I can't you know buy it anywhere I loved that stuff this is quite similar to that I'd still say I probably think the essence one was better but this is very 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 close it's probably the closest lip oil I've come across to being like similar to that it is nourishing but I wouldn't use it to like heal my lips so if my lips are already really like if I've forgotten to put lip balm on and they're really like falling off my face this wouldn't be what I'd reach for to help them um, I'd reach for an actual lip balm, like the Apu Milk and Honey lip balm. That's kind of what is saving my lips at the moment. But this is a great product to use if your lips um, are already in good condition and you just don't want to make them worse. Like it's a really great lip gloss for people that have very sort of sensitive lips that can get really dry easily. So I love it. It is what I'm wearing on my lips today, although a little bit has worn off. So I might put a little bit more on. <laughs> it is completely clear so I can do this without a mirror. I think. <laughs> mm. It has a very, very subtle scent, which I think is coming from the almond oil. It doesn't smell fragranced, and to my knowledge, I don't believe there was fragrance in it, but I could be wrong on that. But if, if there is, it's a very small amount. It sort of smells quite sort of almondy. This month, I've also really been loving my new pieces from Ana Luisa, so I did some work for Ana Luisa recently. This is not sponsored by them. I just really like the pieces they sent over, so it's this little necklace combo here that I've been wearing. It's like a double set, so they're separate necklaces, but they you buy them together, and you can wear them like on their own or lay it up like I've been doing here, and I just love the idea of layering them. I just think it's such a pretty look, and I've also been really loving these little earrings um, that are like a little sort of faux double hoop, and one of the hoops has little crystals on it. It's so pretty. They're really subtle and really nice for day to day. I've really been loving those pieces. I've also, this month, been really enjoying a book. But I've nearly finished it. I'm on the like final chapter. I've got 20 minutes left, it says. So I should have finished it before I told you guys about it. But I read everything on my Kindle. I just find it really easy having all electronic books. Unless it's like a really beautiful cover or something that I want to buy as like a decor piece, then I'll buy a um, physical book. And the book that I've been loving this month is called Money, The True Story of a Made Up Thing by Jacob Goldstein. So this is, as the name suggests, basically a history book on the story of money, where it came from and how it developed. And it's really fascinating. These are the kind of books I really love, where it's like really engaging kind of history, learning about things that we might not really get pay much attention to in day-to-day -day life like we use, we all use money and we all believe in it but like why <laughs> it's a it's a social construct um so really fascinating read as i say i've got like one chapter left i'm down to the conclusion um and has been a really fascinating read a very light read as well like it hasn't i have not had much time this month at all to read but it's only taken me like maybe five hours to get through the book so it's really not um, a heavy read at all. It's very interesting. So highly recommend that. Oh, I also wanted to talk about a plant that I've been enjoying. I hardly ever talk about my poor plants anymore. This guy, 
he needs a water. Look at him. <laughs> but I've just been constantly impressed with this particular plant. Every time I go to do like my plant watering, my Orbifolia is just always so impressive. I also love the pot that this one is in. This Alex got me this maybe last Christmas, the, like Christmas before when we were in Australia. Um, but it's just such a beautiful plant. It's just really thriving here. I will say that some of my plants have struggled a little bit here. Um, a couple of them came home with bugs from the nursery when I like got them. So it's been like a ongoing battle to try and get rid of them. Unfortunately, my starlight weeping fig did not survive. It just kept, I, it was a constant battle with these damn mealybugs. And then the mealybugs started to infect other plants and I was just like, mm-mm. I, you know, it was like a nine month battle in the end I gave up and just chucked him outside and was like, nah. <laughs> Cause it was just so, it was just, I couldn't get rid of them. It was infested and there's such tiny leaves on that plant. So it was a real struggle. Um, this plant, the Orbifolia did have a couple of mealybugs on him at one point. And I was like, ah, he was like one of my favorites. So, but I did manage to cure him from them because much bigger leaves, it's so much easier to control. So it's not impossible to get rid of mealybugs, but on plant with really tiny leaves, it is pretty difficult. Um, so I was pretty gutted. But yeah, I do need to do some repotting of my plants um, in the near future. I think that's why this guy is so floppy because he's sprouting so much new growth at the top that I, I think he's starting to like lose room in his roots and I'll water him and he'll kind of like perk up a little bit and then like they'll flop again. So I think he desperately needs a repot. And since we're heading into spring, that is a very good time to do it. So I'll need to get onto that. And of course my final favorite for the month is my new job. Ah, I'm so excited. So if you watched my vlog from I think maybe two videos ago or last video, I can't remember when I put it up. I officially passed my trial for principal second of the Christchurch Symphony and I will have already started by the time this video goes up in the role, which is so exciting. It's like, it's a real dream job for me at this point in my career. And I'm just like, oh, couldn't be happier. It's just, Go watch that vlog if you want to hear my thoughts because I, I express a lot there but yeah there's just so many reasons as to why I so desperately wanted that job and was just so happy that I was able to do a really good job in my trial and convince my colleagues that I'd be the one for that so I'm just so so unbelievably thrilled very excited to get into the role definitely feeling some nerves about it starting as well though because I don't know now it's official. Anyway, that's basically it for like my favorite things from the last month. I know it's a really small amount considering, especially I didn't do a July favorites because I was on my annual leave, YouTube annual leave. Um, but there's just, I'm just sticking to a lot of my tried and trues at the moment. I need some sort of level of consistency <laughs> in, in some areas of my life since things are gonna go on quite a roller coaster as we leave this place. The living situation is quite uncertain. So we will uh, see where that takes us but that's it from me i hope you guys enjoyed today's video as always if you have some favorite products or experiences or things that you read this month that you loved do leave your suggestions down in the comments i always love finding out what things you guys have been enjoying as well and until my next video i hope you guys have a wonderful few days and we'll talk soon bye